Hello everyone, and welcome to the Ubuntu Touch Q&A, the UbiPorts Foundation show discussing the development of Ubuntu Touch and our community's questions. This is episode 73, streamed live on April 11th, 2020. My name is Dalton, and joining me this week are Florian. Hello. And Alfred. Hello, hello. With sound this time. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We have an amazing roundup of news and questions to go through today. Um, I'm wondering if we're going to get through it all, but if we're going to just sit around and not do it, then I guess we won't. Yeah, that's English. So, <laughs> let's start off at the top this week with PinePhone. Turn it on, turn it on. Pine Ports Community Edition is out for pre-order now. In fact, it has been for a couple weeks. Oops, we uh, couldn't get a show out last week because my computers are awful. Uh, <laughs> we've got uh, Ubuntu Touch will be pre-installed on the PinePhone UbiPorts Community Edition. And if you've been following the PinePhone project, it's the hardware that has been in people's hands for a little while now. Now with Ubuntu Touch pre-installed and a cool um, Yumi logo on the back. Oh, and don't forget about the fancy box art that uh, Joan has designed for us. But uh, you, you can't see it yet, because it's a surprise. <laughs> uh, additionally, it comes with a new revision of the motherboard. So the A64 quad-core A53 processor with 2 gigs of RAM uh, is now sitting on a processor with some hardware bugs fixed from the 1.1 Braveheart edition. Um, it's available now for $150 plus shipping, handling, and import duties. And of course, you are responsible for input port duty yourself. Um, available for pre-order until they're gone. Uh, and the uh, they're expected to ship at the end of May. But any updates to that will be posted on the Pine64 blog over at pine64.org. If you'd like to learn more about the device, you can find those details on our blog at ubiports.com slash blog, or you can buy it from store.pine64.org. And I, I'm really happy with the <laughs> <laughs> we got here. Um, it's been an amazing 18 months. We've met a lot of new people. We've watched as older projects came back and new projects have flourished. It's just been it's been amazing. Of course, yeah. if you don't... It, stop me there. If you don't want to run Ubuntu Touch on your device, I don't see why, uh, you can install another operating system to an SD card, which the device will boot from first. Um, and then you can, from there, install to internal EMMC, which is 16 gigabytes. I, I don't know why you'd want to run anything but Ubuntu Touch, though. I mean... <laughs> Postmarket OS is just great and Plasma Mobile is amazing but you know fine <laughs> don't hurt all well, his feelings <laughs> we seem to be a little bit biased here I don't know why exactly I mean you know we I haven't figured neutral. that one out yet yeah. yeah but it comes back now and then that we just favored it one OS that seems to stand out just for us maybe I don't know you know maybe it's because the background is the same as the stream background I bet that's it could be, yeah. Could mm -hmm. be. Oh. Okay. And um, so you can go over and get your Pine phone, but something you will be able to get um, is another hardware collaboration we're doing with Vala, with the Vala phone. Um, we had a meeting with their team. It wasn't last week anymore. Well, I guess it was last week, but now, oof, <laughs> dates are hard. <laughs> First week in April. Second week in April. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh, some days ago. <laughs> where we talked about improving Android 9 compatibility with Ubuntu Touch, um, and box integration, and other things that they're interested in, notches, um, for their device. Uh, luckily, they've got the right person on the job to work with, Holium 9 and Ubuntu Touch. Uh, and that's Nikita, and everyone loves Nikita because he's amazing. Um, Big shout out. Big shout out, working on Holium 9 right now. Yeah. Uh, for the Vala phone. And you can find more information about Vala and the Vala phone, maybe with Ubuntu Touch on it, over at vala.online. Yeah. 
And maybe there's the point where we could uh, hook in and ask uh, Alfred a bit about the uh, Hallium 9 state. Yeah. When we have him here, it would be perfectly fitting that yeah, item. Yeah, so... Think. Of course. Um, Hallium so, 9 being... Uh, backing up. Yep. Uh, Hallium being the project that we use to run Ubuntu Touch on Android phones. Exactly. Uh, 9 so, being the version of Android. The current <laughs> state of affairs down. in uh, Hallium 9 is uh, that uh, we have pretty much uh, the base system running. Uh, which means that uh, we basically can u make use of the sensors now. Uh, this makes use of a sensor FW, which is a component I do believe by Yolo. I, I might be wrong on that, but You're right. Uh, yeah, but uh, we basically replaced the old sensor uh, framework that we used uh, up until now uh, with something other than what we have written, and yeah, this happens sometimes. Uh, also, the blue binder and Ophono real binder plugins are now installed on this uh, custom rootfs by default, which means that Bluetooth works out of the box, and uh, the real modem uh, is able to be accessed. So no calls yet, or at least no audio, as far as I can tell. Uh, but calls do go through, and um, yeah, uh, you can pretty much expect it to be working someday in the future, let's just say the least. <laughs> <laughs> it will work. It will work someday. Um, mm -hmm. So, and uh, what I've personally uh, started to do is uh, make a port for the uh, Google Pixel 3a, which uh, cannot make use of all the features that Nikita has been working on, and also Irfan, uh, big shout out to him as well. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's going to, it's going to take a while, but I'm, I'm working on it. And uh, speaking of Erfan, uh, he's also released a new version of uh, the Hallium GSI, which means a generic system image, uh, which basically is a zip file that you can flash, and it will both install uh, the rootfs, uh, the typical uh, Ubuntu Touch system, as well as a generic system image, which means you basically, in theory, do not have to build your own Hallium image uh, on your own, just the kernel, and things should work out pretty well uh, from there. So uh, again, shout out to both of these guys, and let's see what the future brings. So are you and telling me that Project Trouble actually did turn out to be a really good thing? It works on at least three devices, uh, from what I can tell, from what I've seen. All right. That's I haven't tried good. it myself, though. Okay, for people yeah. that came later, let's just restate Google Pixel. That's the first UI so I have seen running uh, flawlessly, more or less, on a Google Pixel, right? Because oh, yeah. porting mm -hmm. for the Pixels was like, well, maybe we can do Pixel 1, but not sure, and you just jump to 3. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, who needs the Pixel 2 anyway? Yeah, no one had it. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> all right. Uh, three seconds until all the people with Google Pixel 2s are here. And there they are. <laughs> There's the shitstorm. Yes, yeah, uh oh. Good. Okay. Before we just derail everything into Pixel versus Pixel, um, I think that's basically all for the porting news from the last few weeks. Oh, yeah, and if you want to get in on that kind of stuff, you can head over to at ubports underscore porting on Telegram. That's usually the easiest place to get started with that. Uh, the porting guide has not been added to the Hallium documentation yet, so um, if you like GSIs and building kernels, uh, you'll have to go a little bit cowboy on it, but it'll be okay. Yeah. We promise. Uh a huge thank you to everyone who's been donating via SEPA and PayPal after we announced our new um, SEPA and PayPal <laughs> uh, donation reservoirs? I don't know. Um, it's been really helpful, and we're glad that people have been able to um, give us donations. It's been a long time coming, and we're glad that People were patient with us as we got that going. Uh, for more info, you can head over to ubports.com slash blog uh, and find the tax-exempt donations over CEPA bank wire transactions post. Otherwise, I'll post that in live chat now. Again, huge thanks to everyone who's been doing that. It's helping us keep going. Uh, 
Jan has been working hard the past couple of weeks, and he has released a new devices page. So if you want to see all the devices that run Ubuntu Touch, uh, even though it's not it's not an exhausted list, exhaustive list anymore, um, you, you, can can to, daily. <laughs> you can head over to devices.ubuntu-touch.io. There you'll find all the devices along with a completely arbitrary maturity score and a comment, and whether or not they can be installed using the UB ports installer. Um, and you know, uh, the amazing sure 3 billion devices run Java, but did you know that 35 devices run Ubuntu touch along? <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh. No, but we must honestly say yeah. that uh, it's a huge improvement for us. We are very, very happy and, uh, um, Jan really spent a lot of time. So, uh, say thank you to Jan whenever you see him somewhere around the telegram channels or so because um, it was not easy to get there, to refactor everything that was from the old page and to make it more dynamic. And oh, now yeah. everything works with pull requests, basically. So if a new device comes our way, then uh, the porter can just uh, prepare, all, prepare all the information, make a PR, we just review it. And when we think it's good, then we just merge it and immediately it's published. So a lot of issues go away with that now. Yeah, stats for nerds. Um, all of, <laughs> yeah. all of the device pages are rendered from Markdown, so there's no need to get us to make API calls to our own API that is a yeah. little crusty anymore. Um, so you can find that all over on GitLab um, on the devices.ubuntu-touch.io repository. Um, and stats for nerds again. Uh, it's built with Vue.js and Gridsum. Uh, and Jan is telling me that he loved building it. So that's that's a resounding success. Mm -hmm. um, Florian, you want to talk a little bit about what you've been doing to the OnePlus One? Oh, yeah. Um, so basically, it was uh, requested for, for many people that are already using Nbox uh, and some apps on their phones that um, we do something about um, having to flash always uh, the kernel after an upgrade. So uh, while we did already integrate this some time ago um, on the Nexus 5, and uh, we decided also we can do this for OTR 12 for the OnePlus One. Also, Fairphone 2 seems to have it already, though I have no 100% confirmation if it works. I will have to recheck this before we release the next OTA. So basically, for these three devices, for the Nexus 5, for the Fairphone 2, and for the OnePlus One, you can you have now the patches for the kernel in our images, so you can install Nbox whenever you want. You don't have to do anything when you update, and that will be very nice to the people that are using that. And more devices to come. It just depends on um, where we are with the kernel situation, if we can uh, patch it easily and release it on from our side. Yeah. So if there is any lockdown things, I didn't look into the PQ ones, to be honest, but um, we might have a small issue there. Um, I also would like to invite all the porters out there that they consider adding the Nbox uh, patches when they release a port, because people probably want to try this out also on their devices when they are going to try your ports. So that's something we will also put in the documentation for the porting. So it should be there. And it seems that those patches are fine. So we can really go go wild with them now. Excellent. Keep yeah. it rolling, Florian. Oh, yeah, we keep everything rolling. Unless it rolls down the hill, then we don't keep it rolling anymore, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> that one didn't translate well. <laughs> It's not an Austrian saying. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, there's a second item. Um, so for a long time now, we are already um, trying to improve uh, localization and um, availability for languages on our operating system. And um, because it's a quite complicated task, especially for the core apps and also for the localization of the parts of the operating system uh, that are beyond those apps like indicators and system components. We don't do that much progress. Um, there is uh, one guy in the community that um, is really trying to motivate us to do this in a better way. Um, hello, Adria. So 
um, I'm going to pick up his uh, request to to call for help there because uh, obviously we have not enough people here working on the localization uh, and language maintenance part, especially for languages that are not yet in the operating system. They are really hard to get in because you have to do a lot of um, fiddling with the language packs that Canonical built into Ubuntu. Um, he wrote me a nice letter. I'm just going to read that. And um, I'm supporting his call and uh, uh, his his uh, request for people that might be not that much on the development uh, side that we are usually looking for, like porters or, um, I don't know, display um, compositor experts whatsoever. Yeah but that can do basic stuff, uh, that would be maybe a perfect fit to help out here. Um, he wrote that uh, um, Uberbirds is calling for um, people that can contribute to the language engineering team and that can help in bringing new languages to the Ubuntu Touch operating system. As a community committed to freedom and ethics, we want Ubuntu Touch to be available in as many languages as possible. Aware of the current landscape of language desertification, we want especially that minoritized non-hegemonic languages, communities find in Ubuntu Touch a quick way of gaining presence in technology. In order to do so, we are in search of um, people with skills related to language packages for Ubuntu and Debian, keyboard layouts, design, dictionary for text prediction, etc. Um, he um, is actually uh, speaking Sardinian, which is not at all in Ubuntu. Yeah, so that is one of those cases. And um, for that reason, uh, we provided already a, a method of uh, localizing for the apps. That pretty much works, but everything in the system is really hard to translate. And uh, he translated nearly everything already on our translation server, but we have a hard time getting this in the operating system. So it would be really good if we find some people that are interested here. Um, how to reach out? Actually, there is a language group, but currently it's uh, invitation only. So the best way is to, well, approach us via the usual channels. Um, and um, yeah, just say that you're interested in uh, working on this translation packages. Um, a little bit of development background would be uh, good. It's not just about trans actually translating, it's um, providing the scripts and the stuff to get those languages packaged. Yeah, uh, what else? If you don't want us to contact on Telegram, you can send us an email. Um, what can, one of our email addresses would be good here? Um, do we have Dev. anything? Hmm? Dev. Dev, OK. Yeah. Dev at ubiports.com. Send it to dev at ubiports.com um, and apply for that if you're interested. Yeah. Apply. Apply for the job. You won't get paid, but apply. No. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a weird word to use for that. But yeah, we'd yeah. really appreciate if someone could help us out with yeah. language packaging. And Mart Ow. Ow, I just punched my desk. Marty had oh, some um, experiments in the past with moving language packs into clicks instead of into the system so that they could be released more often or easily, yeah. more easily, and wouldn't take up so much space. That might be something that could be continued to help with this. Right. Let's talk yep. a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about the people who are already using Ubuntu Touch, though. Is that everything coming down the pipe? Um, hmm. Ubuntu Touch OTA 12, our 12th stable update, is coming along really, really well. Um, and that is even better than all the times it's been coming along really, really well for the past six months. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have most of the things that need to be fixed for this update either implemented or in progress. So external display support and all the stability problems that were around it are patched up. Um, Libertine, several bugs with Libertine, including displaying the keyboard and it becoming pink all the time for some reason, uh, have been fixed. Uh, and having it display at all. We fixed uh, the file manager and terminal not asking you to unlock when you run them, which um, could lead to people messing with your phone a little bit more. Uh, we fixed those pesky SDL apps that don't listen to anything Mir says and just do their own thing. Uh, so now they don't break everyone else's apps anymore. <laughs> um, and in the uh, 
uh, forum post for this. We had a lot of people congratulating us on the work for OTA 12 so far. Thank you. It's been quite a ride, but we aren't quite there yet, so we need to keep going until we actually get this released. But we are getting very close now. In fact, I've asked Florian to uh, check out my documentation on how to release an update so that maybe he can mess with that while I mess with the Pine phone in the next few weeks. Yeah, I'm doing now DevOps in a company, so uh, it must be easy to release, right? DevOps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not that hard. You, it's it's The technical side is really easy. It's the people side that you need to wrangle. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, to having the my chance to, to for the first time to uh, be involved very closely in an OTA release, and um, I will try to get the things Q8 now. I'm already posting in the Q8 channel um, yes. every other day or so. People test this, test this, test this. So yeah, let's let's get a little bit um, um, closer to that and say we're going to release soon. We need to test now everything that's still in the QA column of our board. Um, and uh, when this is done, then the countdown starts, more or less. Mm -hmm. So we are looking forward to, we, we waited a long, 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 long time for it. Some people even forgot when there was the last stable OTA 11. Some people said, it was October. It's a, yeah, <laughs> some people said to me, it's a year ago, six months ago, everything goes. Yeah, So nobody actually knows when it was. So it was, in it was so long, we forgot when it was. Yeah. yeah, it was October, though. We released it about the same time as... Um, Ubuntu 1910 came out. Yeah. And this one's going to come out about the same time 2004 comes out. Let's not yeah. have this long of a release cycle again. Yeah. No. We yeah. will now be we, we promise again to be quicker with OTAs. Yeah. So, that's good. it. Mhm. Mm all right. Well, since we've been talking about all the things that we've been doing, let's thank the people who make it possible. Thank you to everyone who sponsors the UbiPorts Foundation and therefore the UbiPorts community and the Ubuntu Touch project by further extension. So thank you to our infrastructure sponsors, including Smooze, Private Internet Access, DigitalOcean, and Packet.net. We're providing infrastructure that makes it possible for us to build Ubuntu Touch and host it. And thank you to our community sponsors on Patreon, including A.Thiel, George Toma, Guido Horning, James H. Jackson Jr., Laurentine Tilleman, Mark Johnston, Max Fielder, Michael Dale Meyer, Milan Elev, Renan Mirkalev, and Thoralf San. If you'd like to join them and have me mispronounce your name as well, it's a special experience, I swear, you can head over to patreon.com slash ubiports. And if you'd like to find other ways to donate, like SEPA, bank transactions, like I was talking about earlier in the episode, uh, Bitcoin, or PayPal, you can go to ubiports.com slash donate. And again, Huge, huge thank you to everyone who's making that possible. We appreciate every one of you. And that's the truth. Yes. Okay. Oh, this Let's is a big list today. Questions. This yes. is a big list. The so questions these... shoot a bit up. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry. We take these questions from our forum over at forums.ubports.com about a week before the... Uh, show or two weeks in this case since we had to reschedule um, there's a post in the news section where you can post questions I put them in this little document here and then we read them out live uh, there's also questions going in YouTube live chat now thank you to everyone who's helping answer those because we have a pack show today yeah all right so, Florian yeah. kick it off um, also I can mispronounce names in this case it's Sela probably yes. Sela wants to know, um, I wouldn't mind having an advanced user option to uninstall some of the core apps that are not relevant to my use case. For example, I have an Nexus 5 and don't need the media player, external drives, help, or UReports app. Um, yeah. yeah. For sure. What can we do here? So the UReports app can be removed. It's installed as a click. It doesn't actually free up the space from it, unfortunately, because that is part of the system image. So it'll be removed from your launcher but it won't be removed completely from the system and it can be reinstalled. Um, I don't know what the help app is that you mentioned, um, but media player and external drives are both installed as Debian packages in the root of S and are currently anchored in place. I personally think that external drives should be part of a system setting, part of system settings rather than its own app. 
Um, mm. So in the future, maybe we can move that so that it doesn't need to be a separate app anymore. I feel like Cyborium, which is the external drives app and Daemon, uh, was a bit of a quick fix solution when they realized, oh no, we have a, we need SD card support. So uh, hopefully we can make that better as we make external storage in general better. Yeah, and the media player is um, kind of the same story at the moment. Um, also browser or yeah, everything that's in the root file system as a Debian package. I mean, theoretically, we can offer maybe to remove the icons in the future to say, okay, if you're uninstalling such a thing, you're just deleting the icon and that's it. But how to get mm -hmm. it back? That's an interesting question then. Go so the it's not that easy. <laughs> not that easy. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Good good advice. I mean, um, in this case, I would also recommend go to our GitHub page, um, GitHub slash U reports on the Ubuntu Touch project. Give us um, a feature request. So we put it there for the other feature requests that we have, and hopefully it doesn't get lost. Uh, Sergio just said <sighs> in live chat, as the quick offer of Cyborium, I can say yes to your assumptions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sergio. Um, it, it's, it's good enough for now, and it's well written. So it's not a huge priority. Mm. Alfred, would you like to take us next? All right. Uh, so Danco6 asks the question, how does the current worldwide situation affect you and development of Ubuntu Touch? Ah, yes. Quarantine. Mm. Um, for the most part, things have been fairly normal. Um, but... Of course, it's interesting to see in the community as everyone is stressed out, out of their minds right now. Well, things are getting better as this becomes the new normal for people, but um, especially in the earlier days when people are just stressed out by everything that's going on, it's kind of interesting to see the effects on the community. Um, for our um, paid dev team, we work from home anyway, so this isn't completely new to us however marius also works at his local health system so he has been out there more uh frequently than he was in the past whereas before it wasn't noticeable sometimes it can be now but um he's helping people out and um i'm sure they really appreciate it so it's good but other than that Development of Ubuntu Touch is still going on like it was before. Hmm. I had a small uh, um, hope that I have more time because I'm also now um, out of my office. But um, let's say it's fortunately still that uh, my company doesn't didn't do any layoffs. But I'm working normally from home, so I have still my 40 hours work week. I'm just sitting in front of my <laughs> private PC. Not even a PC. I have the laptop here, but. Nothing changed for me so much, and um, yeah, I'm still. If I, I think it's still kind of okay. Yeah, um, it's unfortunate for that many many people that are about to losing their jobs, um, have to struggle with things or with family, and um, it will have an impact. Maybe we see it a bit later when the contributions dry out. But for the moment, we can still say, okay, fingers crossed, we are going, we are doing fine. Yeah? Yeah, and absolutely, if there's anything in your life, family or anything like that, don't feel like you need to do anything with Ubuntu Touch or anything like that. Uh, your mm -hmm. real life comes first. Absolutely. Yeah. No doubt. No question. <laughs> um, uh, a quick one from live chat. Amy asks, which Q&A was the bang sound effect? I'm pretty sure that was 72, the last one. Uh, but it also might have been 71, but it was right at the end, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. Can't wait for that remix. <laughs> <laughs> D. Tarrant asks, um, I just read that the UbiPorts Community Edition is available in the UK. Uh, what? How did I read that? I need to check the import duty, and where will it be shipped from? Shenzhen? Um, Hong Kong, I believe. Yeah. Um, uh, everything going well. But the import duty should be normal VAT for you. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm pretty sure that's always constant. Um, plus 40, was it 40%? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm going to butcher your taxes for you. <laughs> As Americans tend to do. Um, 
otherwise um with luck your deck the declaration will get through without um needing that you know you know hush hush um but we'll have to see when it does come for you still check with your local regulations because that'll be um up to your jurisdiction all right hit it florian yeah um stan wood wants to know um which improvements will probably OTR 12 he means there bring to the device and there is github link where we can follow development advancement oh yeah yeah it's really oh. hard to make this point permanently so we have to just explain it <laughs> um whenever we hit it we're yeah um github.com slash ubiports click on the projects tab and go to yeah. the ota 12 project board that's where you can see all the things that have been opened and closed during this um cycle at least the ones that were really major and critical and stuff like that but of course on top of those um we have also app improvements that are being merged uh for the apps that we can update without ota 12 or without any, any OTA, then they will just uh, have their change list maintained by the app maintainer inside the uh, notification or the the list when you have the updates that you're going to install. You can expand that little list there to see what was in the change log. Um, mm -hmm. Also in the open store, you can see the latest uh, changes probably for the app side. So yeah, uh, but for the system and uh, core OS updates, we try to keep um, as much as possible tracked on our uh, OTA projects on GitHub. And maybe we put a link in front on the front page that could be helpful um, so that people find it easier. Uh, on top of that, we don't do any change logs for nightly builds on the devil channel because I'm getting this asked again a few times now. Um, what is Mario doing here? Um, Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. It's okay. Riding on Yoshi. Okay. So no change logs for the nightlies because we just don't have a, a huge team of people that could document every change for every day. That's not possible. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, going back to D. Tarant's question, uh, import duty, according to Lucas, should be about uh, 25 pounds. Um, of course, still check with your own uh, local laws. All right. Alfred, would you like to start us off with Pavoke's questions? Yeah. Uh, he asks, uh, or she asks, uh, I don't know. Uh, given that the old version of Qt Web Engine is really holding back stuff like uh, video conferencing, any chance that the existing patch will be backported to OTA 12? No, not at the moment. Um, Chris has gone and very graciously upgraded our version of Qt Web Engine to uh, 5.14, which is a very much newer version of Chromium than we're currently on. Um, but this late in the cycle, we are close to releasing. I don't, excuse me, I don't want to merge that right now. Um, there's a lot of things that um, are touched by the Web Engine, so yeah. I don't want to break that right before release. Um, basically, what I where my thinking goes this late in the cycle is, is this update better than the last one? And right now, uh, my answer to that is absolutely yes, even without that um, web browser upgrade. The um, uh, So hopefully we can do that for OTA 13. Of course, the pull requests are already there, so they can be tested now if you'd like to start us off with that. So... Um, can't also, uh, wait. I do think that uh, the video conferencing is an issue by itself, so it would need uh, a lot of integration work into the current system, uh, right. which Oxide did provide, but Qt Web Engine by default by itself does not, so we would right. have to probably work on that especially. Mm -hmm. Um. He had a second question. They had a second question. Uh, did Pine64 share how many UbiPorts Community Edition Pine phones they plan to produce? Uh, not currently. However, once they're gone, they're gone. So um, for now, orders are open. And 
till they're not. <laughs> so gotta we get need one. to motivate people to go in. If everybody knows that there are still 15,000 left, then it isn't fun. So just go I'm just there not a very on. good marketing major, more like. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go into marketing. I went into software development. Mm -hmm. Get your pine phone. Um. <laughs> now. <laughs> Another remix. Click on the like button. Click on the like <laughs> button below. Where's my finger? Here. Click on the like button below. There okay. you go. No. <laughs> Let's uh, stop. Oh. Next question. Kaya Kruje. Is that, is that pronounced like that? Kaya Kruje. Uh, Kaya Kruje. Kaya Kruje. Kruje. No? Okay. Uh, <laughs> asks a question. We hope that Ubuntu Touch will continue its success and be much more widely used in the not-so-far future. With this comes the risk of becoming a relevant target for whoever wants to spread malicious functionality to other people's fun smartphones. How are you addressing the security topic? And does eBports make sure... How, how does eBports make sure that nobody smuggles anything into distributed binaries? And I'm referring to the OS and core apps here, not so much the App Store. Do ideas like reproducible builds come up during conversations about this? Okay, security question. Um, this is a deep subject with a rocky bottom. Uh, as far as anything goes with security, of course, on our older devices, we are stuck on the uh, Linux 3.4 kernel or 3.10 in some cases and Android binaries and radio firmware that is never patched. All right, so things like on the Nexus 5, um, it's still vulnerable to Blueborn and several other um, vulnerabilities that have been given names over the years. So from that perspective, not the best situation. But I'm going to be honest with you about that. I'm not going to kid you. Um... Moving up to things like the Pine Phone, where we don't, where we're able to ship the mainline kernel and firmware directly from the manufacturer, and the radio is effectively a black box without memory access to the rest of the system, the story becomes a little bit more interesting. Um, currently, we don't have things like reproducible builds or um, other binary hardening measures, but we could. And currently, no one's working on that, but they could. That's kind of where that conversation goes. Um, maybe also for regarding the distributed binaries. I mean, um, the things that we are building on RCI and distributing via the system image server, uh, they are signed um, to mm -hmm. a certain degree. Not signed, but um, they have a, they have a key fingerprint on them. So. Um, yes, signed. We, we, Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, let's say um, we could, we could, we, we can check this before you install. You can check this with the installer and so on and so on. On the other hand, um, what's really hard is to, um, let's say, um, if somebody would be able to enter this distribution server or system image server and change binaries there together with the signature, then. Yeah, somehow there's always a risk that this could happen if somebody really takes it seriously. Um, and we do. But and you, that's why yeah. we keep that server locked up. <laughs> yeah. So there are there are a lot of things, and also like we cannot lock the bootloaders at the moment, like we should, um, and so on and so on. Yeah, that's some of the one of the spots of uh, Ubuntu Touch that needs a lot of love uh, to get it right, and it's also that we would need people that really understand um, how to do this properly and how to get close things closed very, very well. Yeah. Um, I'm not talking about that our uh, services are exposed. We are firewalling, of course. We are doing all the stuff that's necessary. <laughs> doing um, the right things. Yeah, but um, security audits and all this stuff we didn't do so far. And uh, we would need some people here that have a better knowledge than we do. That's true. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Good to be honest about it. Yeah. We'd love to have that kind of thing done for us. Yeah. Um, updates that are sent. Yeah. There's so many layers here that we're already getting confused between them all, between the servers and on device and 
all these things. So more focused questions about security are always good and we'll try to answer them as best we can. Um, it's big topic, deep topic, rocky bottom. All right, Florian, hit the next one. If you have any more questions, let us know. Yeah, Ma, actually, is this the username? Ma only, M-A. I think so. <laughs> May. It's like typed Will it wrong. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Will there be similar difficulties with the installation of Ubuntu Touch as with other Android phones because the hardware was designed for Android? Or will there not be such difficulties because the hardware was designed differently, like the Pine phone? Um, Where did the start of this question go? Did my paste do? I think I pasted something wrong. Uh, it seems move like on yeah. to the next one while I find It makes that. not much sense. But we love Ooh. to talk about installation difficulties. That's really something yeah. that we are Head into the next one while experts, I meanwhile. figure that one out. Um, there's a second mm -hmm. sub-question, actually. Um, are we talking about oh. Pine phone versus Android phones? Do I get it right? Oh, it's about the Vala phone. Yes, sorry. It's about the Vala phone, OK. Uh, the Vala phone is an Android phone, yes. No, that so... was about the Vala phone. I was met. Yeah, I forgot yeah. to pay something. OK. So yeah, it's a wall of phone. It has an Android layer. It'll have the um, Holium 9 stuff that Alfred's been working on. It's an Holium port. Um, it shouldn't have similar difficulties. Um, well, it has, what are the difficulties for installation? Some phones install very quickly without any noise. The other ones have some issues getting in the right to the mode, uh, having issues with USB connections and stuff. So um it's, it's a wide field to talk about installation problems on Android phones. Of course, PinePhone is easier to install. You just put inside an SD card, if you like, or you transfer the SD card uh, onto the AMCC, and that's it. Um, yeah. So the wall phone, at the moment, when we don't have the open hardware drivers and so on and so on, we can only offer what we get from them. That will be an Android support package, basically, and that will be in the same way as mm -hmm. we have it on the other phones. Yeah. However, we are talking so with them about that issue. It'll be the Android install methods and yeah. Allium 9 and all that. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, Walla wants to go away that they try to uh, open up more uh, on, on the Android Following driver right level. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm behind. No. Can you still hear me? Hmm. Wait. Okay, I stopped talking. <laughs> Take it from here, please. You're welcome. Um, right. Hardware is designed for Android. Holium 9. That's how it's going to be. Installation will be through the UB ports installer if you don't have it uh, straight out. And as Florian said, they would like to... Um, provide device trees and things more than other vendors do. So it'll be a very interesting combination between us and them uh, as we go for this project. Uh, their second question was, will Ubuntu Touch be the original or a modified version as was indicated in Q&A 63? Which you can go back and listen to Q&A 63 for more information about the Vala phone. Um, we had uh, Dr. Wurzer on to talk about everything with that project. So um, right now we're still looking at uh, making modifications for that device, what we can do um, and still integrate these things into Ubuntu Touch and what else we can do. Uh, so stay tuned for more information on that. All right, Alfred. All right. Um, Ari88 asks the question, do you know anything about the Astro Slide project from Planet Computers? And what do you think? Are you already in contact with them? Uh, to my knowledge, no, we're not in contact with them yet. Um, but it does seem like a very interesting device uh, with a slide out keyboard and 400% over its Indiegogo uh, <laughs> or Kickstarter wow. <laughs> amount. I think it was almost at 500% when I checked it this morning. Planet Computers have made a few devices before in this kind of style, including the Gemini PDI, PDA, and the Cosmo Communicator. Um, 
and people in our community have worked with them on um, Selfish and things like that ports. So maybe we'll be seeing something with this device as well. But currently, no official contact. Alan Griffiths asked us a question. He's, a he's the uh, lead developer of Mir. And um, no, Mir is not dead. Mir is still alive. And you can use it today. Yesterday, Marius shared some images of the Lomiri desktop running in a virtual machine. How should developers interest in, interested in contributing to the desktop get involved? Thank you for asking this, Alan. Um, so, of course, the Lomiri desktop that we run on Ubuntu Touch is not just for phones. It is a... Um, it's an operating environment for everywhere. It's hard to call it a desktop environment because it isn't just for desktops. Um, oh, very professionally picking this laptop up off the floor uh, in the middle of the show. This is going to beep really loudly. So the we currently build desktop images of Ubuntu Touch, which you can install on devices. Um, they're meant for a... Um, virtual machine. They run in QMU with basically no problems. But if you have a device that can legacy boot, um, you can also install it on laptops and stuff if you want, uh, just by DDing it to your hard drive or solid state drive. Um, I think this one actually won't boot directly in, so I'm going to have to log in and start Unity. <laughs> I was right. So that's a great way to get involved is to download that image. It has SSH enabled by default, so you can just SSH in. Um, doesn't support all Wi-Fi hardware out of the box, like on this ThinkPad, it doesn't work, but whoop, 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 there, there it is. Ubuntu Touch, Lomiri on the desktop. And this no would touch, be a great way to get started. <laughs> no touch, no, there, there's no touch. <laughs> Ubuntu no touch, it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still Ubuntu Touch, just without a touch screen. Has a touchpad though, but works the same way as it does on your phone. Open it up, use the app drawer, start your apps. Nothing too interesting about it there, except it's running on a ThinkPad T450. Um, and it suspends really fast. That's about all the good I have to say about it. <laughs> the image isn't ready for daily use or anything like that, but it's a good place to start if you want to just. Um, mess with Ubuntu Touch and the Lumiere desktop and running that on desktops. All right, Florian, Great. take it home. Okay, I'm still lagging or not? Let's do the last one. You got it. RC, um, RC, I don't know, asks, I know that we currently don't support, uh, don't use systemd, but do you guys have an opinion on using systemd minus homed for the phone? Do you think it would add value to it and uh, would increase security um, in the way that it can encrypt the home folder? That's an interesting question. Systemd Home D is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love that project. And ever since I heard the announcement, I thought, I want that. Um, so Systemd Home D is a project where you store your entire home directory along with metadata about your user session somewhere other than just on disk or in Etsy password. So all of your password and login information and encryption key is stored along with your home directory in an image file or whatever it may be. And that can be taken between computers even. So big ideas in that project. And it's really cool. I like it. It is a possibility for Ubuntu Touch. However, if we could also get some type of file-based encryption scheme working, that would be similarly equally useful. Um, system deed home D is just the buzzword right now. So, you know, I like it. <laughs> but of course it could be used in a different way. So uh, file-based encryption using either Linux kernel support or something else could also work just as well. Alfred, I know you've been messing with uh, some Android encryption lately, but yeah, we don't right. need to go into that too much. <laughs> well, uh, so the, the problem is that there are different devices that implement encryption differently. 
so when we want to make it easy to install uh, Ubuntu Touch on an off-the-shelf device, uh, then we might have to, or maybe add support for it in the port, uh, we might have to, you know, make a, a few adjustments here and there. And it's still a big question mark. It's still an open question about where to go and how to implement this correctly, how to make it generically, especially. Um, maybe even with uh, systemd homed in mind still, even though it, we might not be using it on some devices, but still the, the, the bigger picture of it, uh, designing it in a, in a way that it's um, doable. There are still a few uh, open questions. And if anybody has uh, experience uh, with Android devices supporting file-based encryption or anything like that, just maybe ask in the, or, or ask us uh, to, or talk to us in the Telegram group. Maybe we can work something out. Mm -hmm. Oh, geez. Someone asked, uh, where can we find that desktop Ubuntu Touch image? ci.ubiports.com in the rootfs images folder. Uh, the mainline generic, whatever it's called, image is the desktop one. And it only works with legacy boot or inside a uh, virtual machine. Okay. Well, thanks, Alfred. Uh, Braylon asks, are there plans to continue supporting Android devices after the boom of devices like the Pine Phone and Librem 5? Yes, absolutely. As you've been hearing today, um, there are projects in the works with newer Android devices already. So it's not like that big um, thing that you think. What? <laughs> no, we're not going to drop support for those. I, I lost that sentence somewhere. <laughs> but uh, what else do you see? Of Oh, yeah, of course, Android devices, some of them are uh, more inexpensive or different or people have them already kinds of things. So it's not something that's just going to be dropped because there's another option. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to add about Holume 9 or anything else like that, Alfred? Excuse me? Can you repeat that, please? Anything you want to add about uh, Holume 9 or your projects or anywhere you want to send people? Um, so Holume 9 is going to be awesome. Let me tell you that. So I've, <laughs> again, I have tried it on this Pixel 3a and it's running so fast. It's, it's quick and fluid and uh, the performance is awesome. I, I cannot complain about it. And uh, yeah, let's see what the future brings. Um, other than that, if you're interested in getting in touch with me, maybe you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, the handle is uh, freddl.me. That's F-R-E-D-L, D-O-T-M-E. And uh, yeah, maybe we can maybe we can talk in the Telegram group. Yeah. Find uh, Florian, in the same vein, don't forget to finish that port that you said you were going to finish and you wanted me to remind you at the end of the Q&A so that you had motivation. Yes, 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 yes. Actually, <laughs> it's lying in front of me here. It's already lighting That's a green. Nexus 6P. So it's, it's a Nexus 6P and um, it's still doing well. It just doesn't have calls or audio <sighs> in calls. Actually, it has calls. I could use it as daily from this moment on, I just have to fix this one thing. And the camera doesn't work. But these are two oh, things that no. um, really take the longest. So everything else was kind of falling into place. But um, I made a break now for some time. I want to restart it now again. I almost left it for two months lying around doing nothing with it, being frustrated about it. And now is the time. So thanks for the reminder. I will. I already prepared a few things on the afternoon, and now I will dive into getting calls uh, with all. All right, please hold you please. to it. <laughs> Everybody, cross fingers that this is the let's say not the night, but maybe it's the weekend of the all you in calls. So. <laughs> Hopefully, right. <sighs> all right. Um, otherwise, if you want to go to see some of the other things we talked about today, including Vala, Vala .online, or Pine sixty four at pine sixty four org, they're making that amazing Pine phone. Um, Planet Computers, uh, we've talked with them about things like the Gemini before, just not the current project. I've been corrected. Um, and so many other things. Um, 
I streamed this week about hacking Ubuntu Touch. Made a little stream to mostly to test the streaming software for this so that it worked. And still we messed up at the beginning. But it's okay. We got there in the end. Um, but you can check that out over my at my channel, which is just Dalton Durst. I can't get a URL slug or anything yet. I need more subscribers. I need Do more it. subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have subscribers. Um, otherwise, there's still a ton of questions in live chat. I'd highly recommend that you uh, find us on Telegram at UbiPorts or over on our forum at forums.ubiports.com where you can ask those questions and maybe get some better answers. Um, been a packed show today, so apologize we couldn't get to all of those. Uh, anything else? Uh, Florian, anywhere you want to send anyone? Maybe a Twitter? Um... You mean where people can find me on Twitter? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> it's always so hard to spell. I don't know how to make it better. I need a new Twitter handle. Um, Lanix Mage. Lanix underscore Mage. Mage. And um, again, if somebody doesn't know why I choose those, everything else was taken already. And all combinations of flow hack <laughs> are also taken. I got angry. I just That's took all something. You know. Now I'm punished for life. No. <laughs> And if you want to find more from UbiPorts, we're on all the social networks that you could think of, including Facebook, Twitter, PixelFed, Mastodon, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Diaspora. Or if you want your news directly in your chat client, we have a Telegram news channel or a Matrix news channel where you can get those. And like I said before, you can find us at UbiPorts on Telegram, hash UbiPorts, colon, matrix.org, over on Riot or Fluffy Chat, and our forum at forums.ubiports.com. We really appreciate everyone tuning in this week. It is a huge show. And thank you for everyone for asking questions and other people for answering those questions. You're awesome. After this, we'll have a little after party. You can find the link to that in at UB ports on telegram uh, and other things. Uh, we'd appreciate if you leave a like, maybe subscribe to the channel. So you get notified of these in the future. Um, yeah. That's my YouTube thing done. So, yeah. That should do it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for the Ubuntu to Touch Q&A. And we'll see you in the next one, or whenever I decide to stream some more hacking of Ubuntu to Touch. Bye-bye. And for the people who are celebrating Easter, Happy Ooh. Easter holidays for the next yes, two days. Yes, of course. Oh, in yeah. Europe, Monday is a public holiday. Don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you all okay. around. Bye. Bye.